gatherers can hide in Garamba forest, in the jungles of Africa, Central African Republic, in Sudan, but he, he will one day be arrested. I'm a military position who is fighting uh, in Uganda. I'm a freedom fighter. <laughs> For the past two decades, Uganda is one of the countries on the African continent which has been plagued by internal conflicts. The bulk of the turmoil has taken place in the northern and eastern region of the country, perpetuated by the Lord's Resistance Army and the Allied Democratic Forces in Western Uganda. The rebel forces inflicted suffering against civilians in the area ranging from maiming, murder, rape, torture, kidnapping, and forced military recruitment of children, who eventually made up of 85 to 90 percent of LRA fighters. Unspecified number of innocent children, women and men have been massacred and several children between the age of 11 to 15 were abducted and forced to join the rebels. Indoctrination. I'm a military position who is fighting uh, in Uganda. I'm a freedom fighter. And sexually abusing young children was the order of the day. The civil wars have left a wake of poverty and despair in northern and eastern regions. The wars are greatly affected, especially in Tasso here. One, our economy has reduced, especially on agriculture part. You find out that during the, the war in Tesla, most of our animals were consumed by the LRA. Most of the homes were burnt. Our children were abducted, and some of them were killed. Even you find out that displacement took place, whereby most of the people went to camps, and you find that uh, the HIV AIDS increased because people were congested in camps. There was lack of food, that's why uh, you find that uh, in education status, the education also has reduced because people are poor. Established in 2002, Uganda ascended to the Rome Statute in 2002. And in July 2003, ICC prosecutor Mourinho Okompo identified Uganda as an area of concern but did not launch an investigation until after Uganda government referred the situation to the court. The referral to the International Criminal Court came in December 2003, the first such referral to the court. President Museveni initially attempted to limit his referral to only those atrocities committed by the LRA. However, the ICC accepted referral of entire situations and therefore the court is mandated to impartially investigate all grave crimes that took place throughout Uganda territory since it was a signatory to the Rome Statute. On July 8, 2005, warrant arrests were issued for five senior members of the Lord's Resistance Army. The warrants were unsealed on October 13, 2005. The arrest warrant issued for LRA leader Joseph Kuhn lists 33 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Others are Vincent Toti, LRA Deputy Commander-in-Chief, Okoto Diambo, Deputy Army Commander, Dominic Ongwen, who is said to have been killed on September 30, 2005, during an LRA incursion in Teso sub-region, and Raskalukwia. Uh, there were grievous uh, uh, crimes that were committed uh, of international concern that missed the attention of the International Criminal Court. Of course, uh, some of the perpetrators of these crimes are still at large, and every effort must be made to ensure that they are brought to book. 
Of course, this is not uh, just the responsibility of the International Criminal Court. The International Criminal Court is a court and not a, uh, a government as such. So the responsibility of executing um, arrests and the uh, ultimate surrendering uh, such persons to the International Criminal Court is the uh, primary responsibility of state. Since Uganda attained its independence, conflicts have occurred and many perpetrators have walked scot-free. But is the International Criminal Court a solution to Uganda's war perpetrators? Even before the colonial handover of independence was about 50 years ago, we had internal conflicts. And they've continued through the 50 years of independence. Rebellion, coups d'etat, overturning of the government, uh, you name it, we've had it. Why do we have these things every other year? Then some people said, you know, what you need is to go to a, a, a table like this one and sit everybody in the nation around that table and ask the hard questions. Not with a view to making judgments or taking people to prison or even this reconciliation I was talking about, but just to understand what is the problem? What's wrong with our genes if this is genetic? What's wrong with our DNA? What's wrong with our political machinery? What's wrong with us? And there we are asking for truth telling. The kinds of things that have been held elsewhere, such as in South Africa, for the apartheid thing. Uganda being the first country to host the review conference of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, which is one of the most remarkable developments in international criminal law, the ICC has had a varied global impact, more so on peace and justice discourses on the African continent. Focus on amendments to the Rome Statute, particularly the inclusion of the definition and trigger mechanism of the crime of aggression, is top on the agenda. However, to help visiting state parties make informed decisions basing on Uganda's situation, the organizing partners No Peace Without Justice, Human Rights Network Uganda, HuriNet, and Uganda Coalition for International Criminal Court, UCICC, organized outreach activities for state party delegates to interface with affected communities, both in northern and eastern Uganda, with support of the Royal Danish Embassy. It's a very common trend. Uh, people sit in boardrooms, people, you know, use information from the internet, you know, you Google and find, uh, you know, all sorts of information from the net. And, 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 and that is the basis of your, you know, uh, discussions and maybe your decisions. And so the idea of bringing state delegates right uh, down to the affected communities and to Uganda being one of the situation countries before the ICC was intended to first of all give them a first hand touch of the situation when they come they are able to see the magnitude of the atrocities that was committed by the LRA when they come they are able to meet and discuss with the victims and affected communities appreciate their fears appreciate their ideas their views in as far as uh, their current situation is, is concerned. We felt it was important uh, that the views of the victims be reflected in the conference uh, or be communicated in some way into the conference, uh, especially since it's taking place in Uganda, uh, a situation country. Um, so we felt this was a good way to do it uh, by having the delegates go and meet with the people and then take back the experiences into the conference. The interaction with affected communities provide an opportunity to share their views and concerns with regard to the work of the International Criminal Court is so crucial during the review conference of the Rome Statute in Uganda.